Phil Galfon pulls closer and closer in the Galfon Challenge as he took down another $100,000 plus session to come within $155,000 total of his nemesis, Venny Vitti, in the Galfon Challenge match one. That's right, Phil Galfon up in quarantine in Canada also posted who he's been working with because we've all been wondering, right? Who's the guy studying with? Who's he working with? Who's his coach? And well, we finally find out his coaches. Take a look here. So as you can see, Phil Galfon, son is actually the guy he's been working with here. And uh, I mean, listen, this kid must be a, a genius, right? If he's helping Phil Galfon to beat Vinny Vitti down, the guy must be a genius, right? Also, Phil posted the other day, it feels like everyone is fully expecting me to complete the comeback and win this challenge. So I just like to remind everyone that this isn't a movie. I'll give it my best shot. So we didn't, did, some people do think it's a movie. Some people think it's rigged. People think this is scripted. You couldn't write it better. Is there a better storybook? Could there be better press? And I gotta be honest with you, this. This does seem like Brandon Ring, doesn't it? I mean, come on, it really does. But I'm just going to go with it. I'm assuming it's not, right? I mean, this seems like a pretty fair thing to me. The guy goes up. The guy comes back down. He hits the lab. He studies. But these hands today, guys, they're a lot of fun. Really interesting hands. Really fun hands. I get a little deeper in them because I've been studying a little bit deeper. If you guys can't understand, let me know. I'll dial it back a little bit. But I uh, really want to talk more about these hands. They're very fun. Very exciting hands. Very fun match. Match starts back again, uh, I think, later today later today it's pretty late right now but i've been doing a couple videos tonight if you enjoy the video make sure you like it uh let me know below love all the comments lately very fun talking with all y'all in the comments and just uh interact with people on twitter and instagram and now i know a lot of people out there are wondering right who's the favorite right now so benny bd was up a lot of money nine hundred thousand. now he's only up one hundred fifty-five thousand. but he's uh he's fading fast right his confidence has to be shot he has to be frustrated no matter what the variance isn't on his side you're gonna see from this action today phil galfon runs so freaking well he flops well in four bed pots he go gets all in and he's winning most of those hands and those are the spots you gotta win if you're gonna take down a match like this so he's gotta be frustrated you wonder if the guy can keep his composure if he's ever had big massive swings like this we don't really know we need to talk to him we need to find out more from the guy but really all i can see happening right now is phil guff on come back to take this down i just don't see how right if he can put in this domination and keep up the run good but at the same time that run bad turns around i mean i don't know it's like we gotta pay attention and see but you gotta imagine if phil he he must be riding high confidence high right uh man it's really i would say it's anyone's match it feels like it's heavy on galfon's side but really is still anyone's match we can't count Vinny Vitti out he's still in there just need to put together a string of all-ins win a few all-ins in a row and i think we're gonna see some different results uh, that's it let's get into it enjoy take care all right my beautiful people let's get into these hands right here we're starting off first hand this hand uh probably one of the worst hands i've seen played so far from the challenge highlights uh i think it was might have been actually the first hand of the session if i'm seeing this incorrectly and i don't i don't know if phil galfon was uh i don't know what he was thinking here right if he's just trying to uh, get vinnie vitti's confidence up high right out the gate but so basically phil three bets ace ten eight five double suited uh both standard plays so far ace nine six nine six for vinnie he flops nut flush draw. You can see he's got nut flush draw and backdoor quad draw with the nines, and he's got backdoor straight draw too. Uh, he could raise or call on this board. Not always going to want to raise all of your nut flush draws here, and uh, I think this is perfectly fine to go call. Wouldn't be surprised to see anyone raise here as well too, though. Hard to go wrong with that hand. And then Phil's hand, uh, gut shot. He's got a backdoor straight draw and a gut shot straight draw. His hand's pretty poor. It probably just check his hand. But he decides to bet, and then the two of clubs comes on the turn. So Benny's got the nut flush. Phil's got a gutter. Uh, once again, when Benny calls here, what are you going to put your opponent on? You're going to put your opponent on uh, straight draws, but you kind of block some of those like an 8, 9, 10 type hand. You're going to put them on all, a lot of flush draws. Some flush draws are going to raise. Other flush draws are going to call. Uh, a jack, some type of jack hand with a couple other overcards. Maybe like a king, queen, jack, 10. Or that, that hand might have four bet pre-flop. So maybe you think about jack, 8, Five, four. You guys know these plays. These guys play pretty wide ranges, so yeah, it's going to be a, a wide variety of, of range of hands. When, especially when you bet that size, he might just float you with uh, with a gut shot type hand with one club in your hand. So turn comes down, deuce of clubs, and now Phil decides to bet pot. Uh, I don't know what he's doing here. I'm not sure why he's betting this. This, this. this can't seem good, but this is what happens when you make some bad bets on the flop. Is that you sometimes uh, make bad bets on the turns and river potentially too. So River comes down to eight. Vinny just calls with the nut flush. I think that's plays perfectly fine. He's going to want to have the nut flush by the river on occasion. So now Phil's got a decision. Does he bluff? And I think when you look at your hand, what cards do you want to have in your hand now when you decide to bluff here? So you want to be betting your ace high flushes and king high flushes for value on the river. You 
might want to bet your queen high flushes as well too on the river so then you're going to need to bluff with some hands and what are those hands to look for most likely you want to be blocking the nuts or near the nuts in situations like this so you might want to have a uh, ace of clubs in your hand king club in your hand maybe the queen of clubs in your hand maybe not you probably don't want to go super wide but if phil is bluffing here we try to figure out why is he bluffing here and well maybe he wants Vinny to think that he's playing a fucking crazy yet crazy guy today or he might be thinking that Benny Vitti is calling that bet too often on the flop and then he's peeling too wide on the turn and then he's going to fold. He's overfolding on the river would be maybe an explanation for this. But either way, it seems like a very poor play by Phil and he's obviously going to get snap called. Obviously, when Vinny calls the turn, what is he going to have? What do we think our opponent has? He's going to have a lot of those flushes, even though he might raise some of the flushes on the flop. So maybe you might think he doesn't have the nut flush, doesn't have the second nut flush. He's going to have some two pairs, but some of those two pairs would raise on the turn. Remember, Jack-7 might raise the flop, might most certainly raise, may, wouldn't raise the turn, but you got to imagine that a hand like a Jack-7 would probably raise the flop. Jack-3, probably not. 7-3, probably not. But sometimes, and those are going to be hands that his opponent might have on the turn, might fold 7-3, might have Jack-7 and Jack-3. So just kind of, I'm just mainly talking this out for myself. I'm getting a little deeper with my uh, with my breakdown of these hands. I've been working a lot, so I'm trying to test my knowledge out here, but Phil loses that pot. This hand, very interesting. I've been thinking about these hands the past four hours, guys. I've been walking around just playing with the solvers a little bit, kind of thinking about these hands. So right here, Benny vitti has got top top two pair. He could check right, check call or, or check raise. I think check calling here is perfectly fine. On a board like ace-king four, your opponent's going to have a, a pretty big polarity advantage, meaning that at the top of your range of hands, they're going to be much farther ahead. So Phil Gaffon has more pocket aces here, has more pocket kings here, has more ace king here. Benny Vitti with three bets, some of those combinations of aces and kings and most combinations of aces as well. So he's going to have aces less likely, which means that Phil is going to have a pretty big advantage on the board texture like this. So Phil decides to bet with two backdoor flush draws and a backdoor straight draw. I think he's going to be betting here at a very high frequency. Benny Vitti has a pretty easy check call here. If he's going to be check calling and check raising some hands here, is uh, another another hand from another time. Uh, turns an eight, so now Phil blocks that eight. So you can see he blocks ace eight here, which is uh, gonna be a hand he's gonna be scared of. He also has the five six, so he's got the gut shot. Now he can decide to bet or he can decide to check. I think either option here is uh, is gonna be okay. If this is a bet, now that's a very interesting hand because I'm trying to figure out why Phil does what he does here. So. He knows that our opponent, when we bet that size, our opponent's going to be check calling most of the range, which means ace kings, ace fours. But I think once again, it kind of comes down to Phil is just, just going to have more nut hands here than Benny Vitti's going to have, especially if he blocks the ace. So he blocks some of the ace eights and the king eights potentially there. If Benny Vitti had a hand like a king eight, I mean, I don't know, maybe king eight, right? King, queen, jack eight, uh, something like that. But we're getting we're getting very ambitious with that breakdown there. And now River comes down a deuce. And now Vinny V check calls. You could say, why didn't he check raise the turn? And it kind of goes back to the same thing I said in the flop, where you're going to want to have some very strong hands that you check call with on the flop and the turn. Otherwise, the River, you can just get bet off your hands, which is what Phil tries to do here. So Phil decides to bluff this hand. And now I'm sitting here thinking, I say, was well, this a bad play? And this is kind of the, the, the beauty of this match is that these decisions right here are what makes this match very interesting because you get into these decisions and it's mainly the decision itself is interesting because you say and you think and say, okay, well, what kind of cards do we want to bluff here? So what do we have for value? Aces, kings. We're also going to have more 3-5 here because Benny Vitti most likely isn't check calling with many combinations of 3-5. So we're, we're not only going to have more aces and kings and 3-5s here, right? So... We got to think, okay, we'll need to work more hands in as bluffs because you want to have, you want to be bluffing, you want to be value betting. So if we have a hand that blocks ace eight and also blocks three five and doesn't block diamonds, which could be a hand that Vinny might call with a backdoor diamond type hand, uh, then maybe this is a hand we include. Seems ambitious, and uh, but maybe this is, a, this is, has to be one of those very, very close spots that. Uh, wouldn't be surprised, right? I wouldn't start including this hand if I were you guys in, in terms of trying to figure out what hands you want to be bluffing with. But Phil does get bluffed. He gets called. And Benny Vitti. So, right. So, let's play this hand over. So, let's say Benny Vitti check raises ace-king on the flop, right? Most likely Phil folds. He doesn't end up here. So, let's say Benny Vitti check raises ace-king on the turn all the time, right? Well, when you get to the river, if you don't have ace-king ever, now you understand the problems, right? You don't have aces. You don't have kings. You don't have ace-king. You don't have many, very many hands you can call with, so therefore your opponents can end up bluffing you a little bit more because your ranges are imbalanced. 
So Venny V takes the hand out. And guys, after that, it's all Phil Gelfond. I'm telling you right now, this is a fucking bloodbath. This dude took him outside and was just bashing him over the head with, with the baseball bat. All right, I might have cut myself off there, but I wanted to skip to this hand. This was most interesting hands. This hand actually led Vinny Vini to quit the match. So as you can see, they're very deep here. 7, 10, 4, 8. I would recommend uh, bowling that pre-flop most of you guys. Even if you're playing heads up. It, it For a lot of new players, just, just fold the hand. But he decides to raise. Phil got on three bets, nine, eight, six, three, double suited. So Phil is going to want to be three betting some of these kind of hands. This seems a little bit too loose with their very deep stack. They're over 200 big blinds deep. This just seems like a hand that's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Nine, eight, six, three. As you can see here, he flops top two pair with the six. So he's got the blocker, the straight. We know that this board texture is going to be better for Venny VD. Phil's not going to be three betting a ton of nine, six, seven type hands, which is why you might want to throw in some hands like the nine, six, eight, three. Venny VD's got the middle pair. With the eight, he's got the open and straight draw, and he's got the blocker for the seven two. He has got one spade in his hand, a little bit relevant, but gonna be a better board for Vinny than Phil. So that means Phil is gonna be checking a lot more often than he's gonna be betting and, and debatably betting very rarely here. So checks to Vinny VD. He's got a pretty easy, uh, pretty easy bet here, I believe. He's gonna wanna be bluffing with some hands. I think this is a perfectly good hand to do it. Has equity when called. Turn that jack, you can turn that six, that offsuit six, and you might be able to cooler if your opponent's got like, uh, if your opponent has a seven as well, you, you win a massive pot against a seven. So you might want to try to build a pot. Turns the king, right? So when Phil got on check calls, what do you guys think he has? Well, he's going to have those over pairs with flush draws, so aces and kings and queens. Sometimes he's going to have a hand like a queen. If we know he's not, right? If we know that he's going to be check calling mainly, he's going to be able to have nine, eight, He's going to be able to have some sets. He's going to be able to have some 10 jacks. And he's going to have some over cards that are just naked flush draws. So maybe ace high flush draw, king high flush draw. Sometimes six, seven is a slow play as well too, right? But his range is going to be pretty strong. So that king comes on the turn. That improves our hands that are ace king with a flush draw type hand, pocket kings, pocket aces with a spade draw in a bad spot here, but you're still going to call. He decides to pot his hand. Once again, going to want to be bluffing with some of his hands. Phil has a very easy call here. He has 9-8. He has the 6. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is a pretty straight forward call. Maybe one of the one of the weaker hands that Phil's going to call with, but when he has 9-8 here, and especially with the blocker, he's going to be calling that hand. River comes down into deuce. Doesn't change anything, right? So now Vinny Vitti has to be thinking. Phil Galfond most likely has a one-pair hand, right? He's got that 9-10 jack. He maybe has an ace-king. Maybe has aces. If he had a set of kings, would he have check raised the turn, right? So if he has six seven, would he check raised the turn as well too? So Vinny Vitti has a stronger range around the river. He has more six sevens than Phil Golfon has. So now Vinny Vitti has a decision. What's he gonna do? And when we talk about it like that, we can see that he's gonna bet. And now Phil has a decision, right? What's Phil Golfon do? He knows his what his hands looks like. This is in a classic spot in poker where you know what your hand looked like. Right, you know you're underrepresented. You know your hand doesn't look like 9-8 here. And you know that this is a great card for your opponent to bluff you. So you sometimes look in okay and say, what cards matter here, right? You brought, you want, you want, don't want to block his bluffs. So what are his bluffs here? 10 jack, queen, spades, and uh, right? So we don't block any 10 jack, queens. We don't block any of those straight draw combinations. We have a blocker to 6-7, and we don't have any spades in our hand. So... If you're going to hero call a hand, which I don't know if you're always calling with this hand on the river, this would be a pretty good candidate to do so. So just keep that in mind when you're playing right. What am I unblocking here? What can my opponent be bluffing right here, here, me here with? And uh, that's what happens. Spoke off on tanks down. And this hand would send Vinny to the showers. He'd go there crying, fetal position, wondering what happened to his life? How did he end up here? How was he up 950000 And now he's only up $155,000. But from there on, guys, it's um, it's all Phil Gelfond, right? And I'll uh, I'll run it through pretty quickly here. So after here, it's pretty much all, all Phil Gelfond. I'll just show you how good this guy ran, right? So I'm going to speed it up here a little bit. Not going to talk too much about these, kind of go a little more shallow. So here he flops top set with a gutter. Venny Vitti has a wrap with a flush draw. I mean... Both these hands are getting in. Phil check raise is really small. Vinny Vitti is going to want to have some hands he's re-raising here with. I think this hand is perfectly fine. You got equity against anything. You don't mind when your opponent folds, right? Sometimes your opponent is going to be going to be when, he, when your opponent check raises here and folds. It's a good thing. But Phil makes backdoor full house, takes that one down. Next hand here, Phil has trips. 
trip twos and uh, it looks like a single race pot, I believe. We didn't see the preflop action here. So if any bets half pot on the turn, maybe it was a three bet pot. I think it was three bet preflop, check, check, flop. He bets turn, Phil, I mean, his hand's very disguised. Benny has top of his range. He's going to have to continue here. I think Benny should just call here when Phil raises. But Benny decides to go all in for some reason. And he gets snap called, loses the big pot there, right? So Phil outflops Benny against those aces. And, and he tries to get Benny to lay down the aces. But Phil just can't lay it down. Right here, you're going to see a four bet pot. And this is what you need to win these matches, guys. Phil calls 10, 10, 7, 4. Uh, questionable play. But when you flop top set... And your opponent's got aces once again. You stack them. And there's nothing Benny can do here, right? So that last hand could have played it differently, sure. This hand, perfectly fine play. Four bets aces. Opponent makes a speculative call with the 10, 10, 7, 4. Now in this situation, Benny has a massive range advantage here. He bets one fifth pot. Phil's just going to call. The turn comes down. What can Benny do? He's got to shove. If Phil has kings with a flush draw, he's going to call. If Phil sometimes has queens with a flush draw, he's going to have to call here. And uh, get snap called. Phil wins another big pot right there. Not much Benny could do in that situation. Another pot right here that we got sped up, I think. Here we go. Okay. So Phil, three bets, ace, queen, seven, nine. Benny VD, four bets once again. Ace, king, king, deuce with the ace, deuce of clubs. Phil's going to call, and then he's just going to outflop him again, man. I mean, when you lose your four bet pots like this, when you get all in, you can't, you, there's there's really not much to do, man. I mean, you're pretty fucked, right? And that's how the variance goes. You see here, Phil flops top pair, nut, second nut flush draw. I mean, Benny Beattie has to go over pair, backdoor club draw with the gut shot. Very easy all in for him. This is a very standard hand. He could potentially just call it a three bet, three bet pre-flop. He could also four bet two. Perfectly played hand by both players. And uh, Phil gets the best from there. This is one more hand, guys. So Phil call, opens 3-3, three, three, do 7 on the button. Calls a 3-bet. I would fold that pre-flop, fold that to the 3-bet. But he calls, he flops. Uh, second set, very easy raise here on the flop. Take advantage of your fold equity. Try to get all in against over pairs with flush draws here. Does he ever call here on the flop? Uh, probably not. No, I don't think, I think his hands can always be a raise. Lost it there. Okay. And then Vinny obviously going to go with this hand. He's got the uh, open and straight draw with the flush draw. Especially when your opponent raises very small here, you're always going to just shove all in here with this hand. Never draw and dead. Get some folds from your opponent. Sometimes get it in. Yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward hand here. This is the kind of hand you want to go all in with. Unfortunately, it does not hit. He loses. And uh, I mean, that, that's that's the story of this match, guys. Phil Galfon booked a big win. $113,000, as you can see right here. And uh, that's what we got. Be back soon. New videos all this week, guys. New content all this week. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button on here. It really helps me out. Channel. Subscribe to the channel for more. Much love, guys. Take care. Be safe. Peace out.